So we did that through, um, through a book called Complete Street Transformations, uh, where we looked at uh, some examples from before and after um, of projects, Complete Street's projects, to see how well they were, how effective they were. So our methodology for selecting these projects was, um, was similar to the catalog. We asked the representatives for um, their choice of projects, what they would com consider a complete street. And we, um, it, with, the, with the caveat that they needed to be fully implemented already, so not just in the planning stage. Um, and then we asked them to describe the elements. And as you can see, cycling and pedestrian improvements are, again, the most common elements. So this um, shows a map of the of the um, different projects that we looked at. Uh, we tried to, to get um, them to be the most ge geographically dispersed as possible in communities of different sizes um, and different types of projects. We also um, we also asked for the um, for the project to be an existing street rather than a new build. So this is the, the first one. I'll just keep show you four examples quickly. So um, this is Highway 7 in, um, in Richmond Hill in Markham. And it was the, probably the most unusual project in the, in the book. And again, MMF was involved in the design phase, I believe, of this project. Um, uh, and uh, so this is a kind of interesting idea of turning this highway um, into a more uh, multifunctional space. So it was the... Um, a bus road, rapid corridor was put into the into the central section. Um, there were sidewalks added, buffered bike lanes, um, and trees. The speed limit was reduced from 80 to 60. Um, and, the, and the reason that this project came about was because of in, increased intensification in the area. So, looking at the you know how this um, the outcome of this project, um, that there's a cross section here on the left showing before and after. Um, in, certain, in terms of some of the outcomes, the, the redesign uh, dramatically improved safety for, um, for all road users. Collisions were reduced by 64%, transit ridership increased by 10%, and pedestrian counts went up by 61%. We don't know about the, um, the cycling counts. So it's interesting, there's been a lot of controversy about this project. In fact, almost every complete streets project, there's controversy. Um, but it's interesting to see that nonetheless there were these really um, fantastic outcomes. So uh, from the most expensive to the least expensive, this has a price, this is in Guelph, but, um, called College Avenue West in, in Guelph, which, which is a mid-sized city. Um, just $11,000 is what this, this project cost. Um, and so what they did was they uh, did a road divide, reducing uh, the two lanes from four lanes to two. Um, added painted bike lanes and reduced the speed limit from 50 to 40. Um, and Guelph is an interesting, um, has an interesting policy in place where whenever they, um, uh, whenever there's road resurfacing work undertaken, um, they build bike lanes. Uh, so in terms of the outcomes for, um, for this college out in the West in Guelph, uh, so as a result of this, there were 200% more people on bikes and fewer in cars. Uh, the, safety, uh, the safety impacts were a bit inconclusive. There were two collisions <laughs> before, um, before the reconstruction, and then there were six in the year following. So this is something that they're um, continuing to monitor. Uh, so Queen's Keep um, is our is the third example. This is a um, signature project in uh, Toronto, uh, which worked to transform the street to prioritize walking and cycling. So this is this is a, a pretty big, big tourist destination, lined with high-rise buildings and a mix of commercial and residential uses. So again, four lanes were reduced to two lanes. Um, the speed limit was reduced from 50 to 40. A dedicated streetcar um, lane, an expanded pedestrian promenade, and a new multi-use trail. Um, so in terms of this, this was a fairly dramatic increase in the number of people on bikes. Um, the weekly traffic um, increased dramatically as did the daily counts for now up to 50,000 cyclists, and this was from a few years ago. They also saw pedestrian traffic and commercial activity increase. Um, there's been some, uh, the, the conflict, the, there's been some conflict with the design. It's a fairly unusual design, um, so they're still trying to work out 
how to address those conflicts. So the last example I'll show you is, um, this is a, a couple of paired arterials uh, in Toronto, uh, Richmond and Adelaide Street. They're actually like my, my favorite in, in, the, uh, in the book uh, because they've actually substantially improved my, my daily commute. Um, so that, you know, on this example, there are four traffic lanes that were reduced to three for the, most, for the most part, sometimes two in order to accommodate off-peak parking. And then unidirectional um, cycle tracks were added to each street, um, separated from, from traffic by either um, a baller or a feeder bumper. And this was this was a this has been these streets have been an incredible success. There's been a huge explosion in the number of cyclists using the streets. The the delay for um, there wasn't the, the traffic delay, the motor vehicle traffic delay that they anticipated. Um, there was a slight delay on one street um, during, just during the afternoon peak. So then returning to these four you know, key goals that we're hoping that complete streets will, will achieve, um, you know, I think that from, we feel pretty confident in what we found that, that certainly uh, complete streets um, increase the number of people walking and cycling. Um, they, they add, there's some improvement in, in safety um, it's still kind of early days around that level of service. That's not something that people are typically looking at. And the, and the broader environment is, is both, that's you know, notoriously difficult to evaluate. Um, but as, as Dave mentioned, we have had some experience in looking at the, the impact on the retail environment and feel pretty confident that um, these kind of redesigns can actually help retail as well. So just um, finally, I mean, I think there's, there's lots and lots of metrics that we can be using and personally and, and for, our, for our organization we're really interested in digging in and looking at those and understanding um, and how these how these street projects are actually um, transforming life on the street but for us the increased safety is is the most important metric so that's it for me if you have questions I'm happy to answer.